Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is a show for you. Welcome to episode 21 of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today we're going to be talking about Sarcosuchus, a giant crocodiliform from Africa. As always, George, what's the fossil record that we have? So we do have its skull, of course, the most important part of a crocodile, but we just have pieces of its armor, its rib cage, and some parts of its backbone. We don't really have its arms or its tail. So estimates on its size vary from like being 30 feet long to even 40 feet or even 50 feet long. It's, it's hard to tell without a full tail profile. All right, George, we have four figures to look at today, including two new ones from Rebor. Let's get started with the Collect A model. All right, Collect A Sarcosuchus. Now, I will say the main thing about this creature we're going to be looking at is going to be the head because most of the body is going to be very crocodilian. And that's something we're all very familiar with. So Sarcosuchus is known for like its bulbous snout and it's very narrow tapering into the back of the skull. And they they did portray this, but the teeth, they're, they're so like rounded out. They look like little, um, little polished stones, which, oh, look at the eye. That's pretty neat. <laughs> Sorry, my ADHD is just going all over the place. I should do this in a more organized fashion. Its mouth is not open and closed. It's it's in this open mouth position. But I do like the fact that they added kind of like a deep uh, undercoat of paint. So it's kind of like a, this dark coloration between the scales. That's, that's something you really see in like saltwater crocodiles and uh, Nile crocodiles, uh, which, you know, the Nile is in Africa and these guys are from Africa. This tail does taper off to a point uh, without getting much thicker at the end. Most crocodilians have like a flatter tail towards the end, especially like alligators. It does have these scutes and osteoderms, which were found with the fossil. They were a bit more flat than you see in uh, here, but the spikes are a nice addition. You don't really see claws on, on this uh, figure, but the front looks okay. It's the back that kind of just looks a little weird. They should taper off a little bit and be slightly webbed, at least as far as we know from crocodiles today. I would say this 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 was a it's a pretty decent sarcosuchus, but it looks more like a crocodile than it would like a sarcosuchus. Let's take a look at the Safari LTD figure next, George. All right, so I'm gonna go straight away and say I have this one, mostly because this was the biggest sarcosuchus that came out at that time. It wasn't because of accuracy; it was more of a availability. But without further ado, let's go into it we've got the bulbous front with the large nostrils with the tapering skull this one's a bit more proportionate than the other one the other one's very thin um and you've got the larger front teeth all right we're, we're going somewhere and you see the slight variations in the teeth as well there's like a, a middle tooth that is slightly longer than the other ones and let's look at the other side it's consistent with that if you look at the fossils of sarcosuchus you can see that not all the teeth are the same size and that's something that's very important to show. This mouth does not open. It is closed. But look at that beautiful green eye. It kind of has like a sheen to it. It's very shiny. It does have this kind of mandibular attachment here for the muscles. So I do like that they highlighted that. It shows that it has a powerful bite. As I was talking about in the previous Sarcosuchus figure, I was saying that the, the plating armor was flatter in Sarcosuchus than, than it was shown over there. This is pretty consistent with what we found in the fossil record of these creatures and the tail is flat much like an alligator like i was saying uh crocodiles are also similar but the the amount of flatness on this tail seems more alligator like than crocodilian like and that's that's something i'm familiar with i'm i'm from texas and we have some alligators down there this guy has a very erect posture so that means that it's kind of standing up a bit more straighter than the previous uh sarcosuchus this guy was not lounging around. This guy is looking for its next meal. With that, you can see that sort of camouflaging stripe pattern. This is definitely like a stalking prey kind of predator, um, the way they portrayed this uh, Sarcosuchus. I really like it, and not just because I have it. <laughs> cloaca? It does have a cloaca. So it's right there. And remember the webbing I was talking about earlier? This one does have that webbing. Let me move it closer. See the, the toes are webbed and you can see the claws a bit better and the toes are tapering off. So that's something that you you really see in all crocodilians, whether they're crocodiles, alligators, caimans, you know, they've got like the smaller pinkies and then they increase in size. Now, 
this is a uh, sort of a safe assumption because we haven't really found all the limbs of Sarcosuchus. But if all the family members have it, then you have to include it. So I, I got to say, I really like this one. And not just because I have it. So quick decision, George. These two models are on the lower price. And if you had to pick one of these two models, which one would you pick? I would I would pick this one. I'd buy it again. <laughs> I'd have two Sarcosuchus. This is this is a pretty good one. Okay, George, let's take a look at the Rebore models that were just released this week. There's two different models, same version, different color scheme. Let's take a look. Okay, so which color version is this one? That's what I would call brown. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the previous ones, those those were not Crocs. This is a Croc. <laughs> look how big this thing is. This is a monster. And look, it even comes with this little baby dinosaur with battle damage. Oh, look! from the looks of it, it looks like a Nigerosaurus. Very cool. Poor thing got massacred. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. I awestruck this. It feels like I'm holding a baby Sarcosuchus in my hands. That is so realistic. Oh, yes, it closes and opens. This is what every kid and adult wants. They want a crocodile toy that can open and close its mouth. We have to do it fair, so let's start from the snout. It's got a very bulbous snout, tapers, but look at this. The nostrils are more on the top than forward facing. This is very important because most crocodiles live in the water. So if their nostrils were at the front, they wouldn't have a good time breathing. But if they're at the top, then they could kind of submerge themselves and breathe while they're underwater. So that's, that's something that I think is a good choice. The eyes are a bit smaller proportionately than the other figures. I don't know how accurate that would be. Look at those teeth. Now, the middle one is a bit longer than the previous ones, and the first ones are definitely longer, as consistently seen in the fossil record. And if we move to the back scutes, they are flat, very much with accordance with what we found. And the tail is also flat. So this was a, definitely a swimmer. And my goodness, I just love the scales on this thing. It looks like they individually sculpted each scale in reference to like crocodiles alive today oh even the arms look at that the scaling of the arms all the way to the hands are very detailed even the claws notice that the claws here are almost translucent they they look like actual like crocodile or alligator claws that is amazing wow wow wee wow and it has like a leopard pattern going on that is neat uh, you do see the muscle attachments back there. That is very, very reminiscent of a strong crocodilian bite. And I realized I didn't look inside the mouth. Oh, look at that tail. Oh, the tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a tail inside the, the Sarcosuchus mouth. No, look at that tongue. That is a very, very accurate tongue. Like if you've ever seen a crocodile or an alligator or any crocodilian open its mouth, that, that's basically what it looks like. Oh, I, I just love the gloss on these things. It looks like it just got out of the water. That is, I, I can barely even fit it all in frame. I really like this one. Well, George, I'm going to blow your mind. Take a look at the tail. The tail actually bends and is posable. No way. Oh, wow. What? So you can have it straight or bendy. Or straight or bendy the other way. <laughs> that is amazing. This did just get better. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, man, Rebor, you are going above and beyond with these Sarcosuchus. Okay, George, let's take a look at the green one real quick. All right. Ooh. Oh, man. Ah. Just when I was falling in love with the, the other leopard print one, this one's like classic green crocodile. Uh, this is my favorite color. I love green. The same nostrils as the previous one. Oh, the inside of the mouth, though, is a little bit different. It's kind of got this swampy color. The teeth are consistent with the other figure. You've got those translucent claws. I really love that detail. The armor is the same, although it is easier to see these side osteoderms, which a lot of crocodilians have. Like, it's not too odd to think that these guys would have also had them. The tail, same structure, very bendy and posable. The armor, very accurate. And it's easier to see the counter shading on this one. You've got this really dark green at the top with stripes and it's kind of like swampy tan it really looks like i'm holding like a reptile right now in my hand oh they've really outdone themselves they even have a cloaca there see how the scales come together on that slit right there that is a cloaca and this model also comes with the minifigure it does oh my goodness massacre the babies <laughs> baby dinosaurs i i don't know that doesn't make it any better <laughs> Look at that. Okay, George, mugshot time. Let's take a look at the head side by side. Oh, I don't think this is fair anymore. 
actually, George, do we even need to do muck shots on these? Because I think this is a massacre, as you said. Mm -hmm. The Rebor knocked them all out of the water, both literally and figuratively. If money was no object, I would go for the Rebor ones. In fact, I might buy both. <laughs> for a budget option, I would pick the Safari. This really is kind of our biggest and broadest runaway decision in any figure that we've seen. W once I saw those figures, I knew it was over for the other ones. All right, that concludes the episode. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.